Welcome students, Tom Harmer here, your accounting professor, and this will be a demonstration of how to complete depreciation tables for various depreciable fixed assets. Now, a fixed asset can be depreciated in a number of different ways, if you've, as you've seen in our textbook. We've got straight line, you've got uh, double declining balance, you've got mackers, and you've got units of depreciation methods. They didn't talk about setting up a depreciation table for that fixed asset. And I'm going to demonstrate to you here, and we'll be learning in this class, how to do that. Because in fact, when a company purchases a fixed asset, the accountant will set up a depreciation table for it. So at the end of every accounting period, the accountant, him or her, can go to that table and pull the amount of depreciation expense for that particular accounting period. So with that, we shall demonstrate how to set up each one of those types of depreciation tables. And also, we are going to journalize the purchase of the asset, the first year's depreciation, and then we're going to journalize disposal of the asset. After that, we are going to post those journal entries to the related T accounts. So then you will see the big picture on how depreciating fixed assets occurs in an actual company. So here we've got Joe's delivery. Purchased a truck for $40,000. Useful life is four years, 300,000 miles. Salvage value is estimated at $4,000. We're going to complete the depreciation tables for straight line, double declining balance, and units of activity. And then we're going to journalize the purchase of the truck. And then we're going to journalize the first year's depreciation expense. And then we will journalize disposing the asset um, later on. So here we go. Let's start off with our straight line depreciation. We've got here, I've got a little, this area over here is just calculations. These are not actually part of the depreciation schedule, but I am put it here for you to use. So we have a date of the purchase here of 6 30 06. Okay, uh, the life is four years. Okay, and we're doing this. Okay, that's four years. The depreciation rate, what is the percentage? Well, you in the textbook it illustrated you divide the number of years into 100%. So that's going to be equals to one divided by, and there's your four there, boom. So there's your 25%. Now, the cost of this was $40,000. The salvage value is $4,000. So what is the depreciable cost? The depreciable cost is the difference between the cost less the salvage value. So that's going to be $36,000. That's how much we're going to be depreciating the asset for over its useful life. The first year number of months. Well, look at this. We've got here, this was purchased on June 30th, not January 1st, June 30th. So the date, the number of months in the first year is six months. Okay, the date of disposal. Let's see, that is given to us later. That is disposal is on 6.30.07. So it's 6.30.07. A year later, okay, at 6.30.07, there we go, okay, and the sales price is given at $25,000, okay, so now let's start off by creating our table, now it was purchased on June 30th, so in our schedule here we have our depreciation percentage amount, our depreciation expenses calculated, our accumulated depreciation to date, and the book value of the asset. Well, on June 30th, we just purchased it, and the book value was given as $40,000. That's the book value on the day we purchased it. There's been no depreciation yet. We're not deducting salvage value from that. That's our cost. Okay? So now here, our depreciation rate is equal to that 25%. So I can go equals. I can have it 
equal to that 25% there. Now to copy that down, I have to, I want to copy that down, but I want to put a dollar sign there before that seven because I want it to, that anchors it on that, um, that one cell. So now I can copy that down. There you go. There's our percentages each time. So the depreciation expense, it's going to be 25% of 36,000. So that's going to equals 25% times 36,000. Okay, now I need to drop my anchors here because I don't want that changing as I copy it down. So now I copy down that 9,000 a year. Boom, right there. So that's how much we're going to be depreciating it per year, except for this first year, you see, it's only half a year. So this is going to be divided by two. Okay, so that first is 4,500. Now our accumulated depreciation, that's going, I'm going to create the formula for that. It's going to be equal to the accumulated depreciation from the prior period, which was zero, plus the current year's depreciation. That is our accumulated depreciation. So I can copy that down. Oops, I went one too far there. Okay. And so here, and what is our book value? Okay, our book value is going to equal the book value at the purchase time minus the accumulated depreciation. Okay, so now I got to copy, I got to put an anchor on that uh, seven there so it doesn't, so that's going to be dollar sign, boom. So when I copy it down, it's always looking at that 40,000. And there's our book value here. Okay, now you see we've got a problem here because one, we know the salvage value is $4,000. Okay, so we can't have a book value less than that. So the uh, in this last year of depreciation, we have to get that back to four thousand. And so that's going to be forty five hundred in our last year of depreciation. That brings us to an ending book value of four thousand dollars. Whenever there is a stated salvage value or residual value to a fixed asset, your depreciation table can never over depreciate it. It always has to end at that number. So always check your work when you're doing that. So this is our depreciation table. If we were using straight line depreciation at the end of the first year, we would have a debit to depreciation expense of 4,500 and a credit to accumulated depreciation. In the second year, it, on December 31st, it would be a debit of $9,000 depreciation expense and credit to accumulated depreciation of 9,000. And that's how that goes for straight line depreciation. 